Hi everybody, my name's Mike. I'm uh, first off going to apologize for my voice. It's not like I have a great speaking voice. In fact, uh, from my experience with my children, I find I put them to sleep just by talking to them. So I feel like I have something I need to say. I've you know, been listening to YouTube videos for a long time and you've got a lot of people with a lot of opinions on politics and religion and you know their takes on what's real and what's not and you know um it get, it seems to get a little old i've uh i've listened to a lot of 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 youtube videos and and uh just i'm not getting anything new um there's nothing that uh is enlightening me there's a lot of bs out there um and of course what i'm going to tell you is my conjecture and you know what i believe to be true but uh I, all we can do is just uh conjecture at some point because we don't have the uh, the facts physics doesn't tell us everything about the known universe uh, we we don't even have a good definition for energy so uh i'm proposing to tell you how everything came about uh, how the universe got here uh, what our place in it is um, how matter came to be, um, who, what, when, where, and why. So, you may at this point, you know, okay, I'm clicking off that, don't want to hear that, it's ridiculous, nobody knows all that, um, and that's fine. Um, some people may decide to listen on further, just let me see what this idiot has to say so I can write some comment that says you know you're an idiot you're a fool you don't know what you're talking about you're you, you don't have any facts to base this on and so on so on so on anyway um you know I, i've read all about various religions hinduism islamism buddhism taoism taoism dualism the I Ching, um confucianism um christianity uh you know um Judaic law, so on, going back further and further and further, the Sumerians, the Assyrians, the the uh, the Chaldeans, the Akkadians, and so on. You've got you got a variety of written records um, that have been deciphered and uh, give us a variety of stories. There's there's all these flood tales. Um, uh, some people say they have proof that Noah's Ark is up there and so on. But anyway, aside from all that, let's let's just examine what we got in front of us. I, I think uh, reality serves as a great symbolic reference of itself of that there's something that there, there's a construct. Everything has a construct. Why? Why are humans the way they are? Why are trees the way they are? Why are animals look? the way they do and come in the variety they do and so on so um it's really all we have to go on we there's nobody that's come to us that says okay here it is and here's the math of it and this is this proves there's no proof of anything so we just uh make up our own minds some people don't want to make up their mind. They just want to live in the world. They don't want to be bothered. Um, they know they're going to die one day, and they're just not going to worry themselves with it. It's just uh, this whole thing. You know, life's too short. Don't have time to worry with that. Uh, got other things to do. Eat, drink, and be merry. Tomorrow we die type thing and all that. Anyway, so my idea is that uh, there is a construct. You get in this whole idea of finite versus infinite. Um, how many grains of sand are there on the whole earth? You know, is it infinite? No, it's finite. Um, how many suns are out there? It's finite. How many planets? It's all finite. Galaxies, all that. You know, er everything. There, there's a finite number of e of actual individual moments of inertia that are a result of this energy transference that's going on in the void. And I suppose that's the place to start is the void. The void came to be void. Voids 
are by definition the removal and the absence of something. This idea that something came from nothing. I, I have never bought that. In my whole life, even as a child, uh, I remember hearing the, the idea that, you know, that the, the whole universe is entropic and, you know, the Big Bang and wh where did that energy come from? It's not enough for you to tell me that uh, this massive amount of energy was released into the void and became all matter. That may well be, but it came from somewhere. It didn't come from nowhere. That doesn't make any sense. It's, uh, that's antithetical. In any case, my conjecture, my speculation, is that whatever the form which I would call God, a sentient, conscious being, seeing that we're sentient and conscious, we're alive, um, we're a construct, we're formed to be able to live in this world under these conditions, but yet we have a consciousness of ourselves and so on. So this consciousness, did he have a geometry? Um, was it disturbed? Say God is a sphere and there's an imbalance created and he becomes a hollow sphere so that he removes his energy from the interior of the sphere and there's something left. Um, but that something is in a state of flux. It can't exist apart from him. It's as if you removed something from its source, you know, uh, think of magnetism. If you've got, you know, uh, negatively and positively charged and you move them close enough, one gets, they get sucked up together. Um, what if everybody, everything in the universe, in the void, is trying to get back to its source? You know, so, but in the process of this energy being left in the void, whether it's a big bang, it could be a, a finite number, yet a, a vast number of big bangs in a supersymmetry that bring forth all these galaxies, nebula, so on, all being pulled back to the source. But in the process, there's a, there's a pattern like a fractal pattern of energy. And interestingly enough, these energies are what? You, you have this nucleus that's positively, net positively charged in this cloud of negative region around it that has this positive region contained in it. And you would think, oh, it's this positive region is trapped inside this dominating negative region. But, you know, there that's a construct as well. Think about it. Uh, the negative has to hold at bay the positive has to there's there's a, a there's an alteration of the original energy that's taken place and now the construct the construct is this positive region surrounded by this cloud of negative which gives rise to all this material that's of course mostly empty space here we are mostly empty space interacting with things that are mostly empty space and yet they have substance to it um, you, you know, you touch something and it's there and, and takes on these variety of forms. Well, guess what? Those variety of forms speak to something. I guess the first thing to point out is, to me, which is most obvious and completely flies in the face of, of many of the theories, uh, especially evolution that comes about when you say that, uh, wh where, did all, where did we come from? And, uh, and it's easy that if you go to a tree. Uh, it comes from a seed and the seed sprouts and you've got all these roots underneath the ground and you've got this tree above ground and the, the roots, if, if the tree was 100 years old, well, if you got to the tip of the roots and you started going backwards along the root system, you get to the trunk. Same thing with people. We all have, we're all the progeny of certain progenitors. Uh, if you go backwards in the lineage, where do you get to? You get to a pair. I remember seeing this History Channel thing, and it's, it ends with, oh, well, we all came from 10 people. 
well, where did the 10 people come from? And I guess unless you believe that aliens came down and deposited 10 people or created 10 adults or wh however you want to look at it, and they, their offspring was all of us, but in the natural order of things, at least, uh, from what I see of people having babies and so on, so on, so on, if you went backwards, if you, you know, just like science does in many cases, they look at a, a process and they turn it in reverse and say, what started it they go backwards in a progression well if you go backwards in a progression of the human race you get to a pair uh I, i'm sorry i can't help that uh that i i guess i can't prove it but yet if you just looked at the evidence that you have around us uh we, you that's the deci that's the conclusion you would come to is that it came from a pair but in my estimation that uh, for lack of any other possible better explanation for lack of another better term, God supplies the energy and constructs the matrix of all the energy. In fact, I would venture to say that it's all codified, that every bit of energy that exists in the void is a code, just as your body has within it a code that it runs by, that your your genetic makeup involves the control of cell replication and so whether it's plant or animal it replicates by a set of codes um, whether it's a computer program replicates by a set of codes and not only that this whole entropic idea where energy is dissipating well if something goes from order to disorder, well, we've got order in front of us. Your body is an ordered construct. Uh, there's many things around us that are ordered, that have a code within them. Just like the computer you're running, it runs by a code. Um, if you take a blank hard drive and you stick it on your table and you come back a million years later, is it going to have an operating system on it just by chance? You know, evolution would tell you that it would, that if given enough time, that that blank hard drive would just, boom, it would have an operating system on it. But, you know, it, given, an, given enough time and chance, uh, maybe lightning striking or something and making some electrical changes, electromagnetic fluctuations, and but yet it has to still be all there in order, all the ones and zeros, all the logic has to create an operating system and that just doesn't happen by chance and how much more the human body and even the quote unquote simple cell is not simple it's it's a it's a vast machine like construct of parts that have to interdependently work to bring about a you know an ordered existence y your body can't work except the way it works there are certain changes you can make in your body that will kill you um this whole intermediate structure um i, I don't see it where wh where's the cat becoming a dog we should see cat dogs and i don't see that except on cartoon channel in any case there are particular constructs that function a particular way functioning on this particular earth that has a particular geometry, that has a particular set of, of material, you know, formations of uh, chemical reactions, uh, interactions of energies that produce a variety of results, um, all seem to function in a particular way. So there seems to be a code of everything that all of it is codified down to the smallest degree and there's there's a code in us but then of course without a purpose to it it seems to just be random you know you can say oh it's just random fluctuations and so on that all this just came by random chance well there is really nothing random in fact things as i said are finite if you if you were to do, if you were to th put some dye in some water, well, that dye would disperse in a certain way. Well, you go to a mathematician and say, please give me the mathematics that expresses how this dye, 
you know, um, uh, how it, how it, uh, you know, move throughout this liquid form and, and every particular swirl and movement and everything. And, and he would probably say, you know, well, it's, it's, it's random. I can't, I can't give you that mathematical formula. I can give you a close approximation of, of the, the Brownian movements that take place. But as far as where every particle of energy, where every, you know, uh, transference of energy that took place, if you put a drop in one time and you put a drop in another time, it would, it would be different. And of course, that's true. Uh, um, circumstances change all the time uh, in the environment, uh, the, the surroundings, the, the particular energy construct that you, w when you do the experiment, w what the temperature of the room is, so on and so on. In any case, without a purpose, it all seems random. But what if all this huge codified construct is there for a reason? Um, then what is that reason? What if it's to distill out something? What if it's to sift something out? What if it's to, to utilize the construct to get rid of the energy that would be in discord with everything? Now, this sounds kind of New Age, but I think New Age has, has uh, commandeered this uh, terminology uh, from our language and uh, giving it a bad name. They, they want to say, you know, resonance and vibrations and so on. And, and uh, the, the Christian community would say, oh, well, that's, that's new age thinking and so on. But th that's, that's foolishness. W w the whole of the universe is a symphony, a symphony of vibrations. I mean, we, we all have, everything's moving, you know. If there's energy, there's movement. It's as simple as that. So to, to think of it as a symphony is really uh, your best metaphor. I mean, like string theory, interactions of vibrations. That's what it all comes down to, interactions of vibrations. Gives rise to, gives rise to this myriad of interdependent uh, energy fluctuations that are going on all the time. And, and of course, somebody would look at that or or uh, examine it and go well that's 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 infinite you, you could not if you if you made a, a mathematical um, formula for it it would be approach infinity and it'd be undefined it would just uh, there, there'd be no way to conclude you know precisely what the end result is so the conjecture ends up coming about as well um, it's too big for us if it is a code the codes too big well of course it's too big but a programmer writes code and maybe creates an operating system. Well, you use that operating system, but you don't know how it works. You may know, well, there's registry entries and there's a, there, there's a, there's a machine instruction set and there, there's the BIOS that defines all the, uh, the, 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 the equipment you have hooked up to your system. And, uh, you know, then there's all the logic that goes into all the services and, you know, on and on. Uh, you could break it down. You could spend hours breaking down the function of an operating system. And that all allows you just to run a program. It's a program that allows you to run programs it's, and to control devices. So, you know, it's 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 huge. It's vast. Yet the program to the programmer, he's he's uh, he's not baffled. He wrote it. He knows. He knows what's involved. He breaks it down into modular subsets, and he deals with each one of them in particular. He knows what how, what's necessary to, to allow user input. He knows what uh, it takes to handle that input and what to do with it. So, you know, just to, to throw up our hands and say, well, it's too big, it's infinite, whatever, that, that's just uh, another way for us to excuse ourselves from even coming to grips with what are we here for, who did this, why. And so there is a why. And uh, unfortunately, that why has, has a great deal to do with free will. You know, some people say we don't have free will. Some people say we do have free will. Well, we do have free will. We have the, we have the free will to withhold ourselves. We have the free will to say no. Ultimately, we have the free will to reject 
Christ, which is what it all comes down to. And that's why God does what he does. Um, here I'll go into the rest of the everything theme. Um, God creates Lucifer. Lucifer is the sum total of wisdom and beauty. Well, here's the caveat. Lucifer can't show himself to the rest of the heavenly host. They can't look upon him. His brightness is too great. His form is too perfect. It would be idolatry for them to look upon Lucifer. Only God can look upon Lucifer, and Lucifer can look upon God. So there's a constraint there, but he is the he is the sum full of of creation within the heavenly host. So he has this burden, if you will, laid upon him. I mean, imagine it, if somebody on earth would be the most uh, the most beautiful and the wisest. And, you know, they have two choices. Either they could revel in it and want to show off to everybody else how beautiful and wise they were, or with humility, they could maybe like this, like speaking through a microphone where you don't know what I look like. You know, uh, if I was beautiful and wise, I may want to get on national TV and go look at me. I'm beautiful and I'm wise. And in his case, he was not. He was just not allowed to. He was the anointed cherub that covers. He covered. He could not. He was not allowed to display his personage. My own personal belief. I think it fits in with the whole idea of uh, the idea that Adam and Eve knew they were naked. Uh, uh, the, the idea that they had shame attributed to that. Um, the whole idea of pride and uh, balanced out with humility and so on. So that's just the first part of it. But when Satan, through pride, decides that, that well, that's not good enough. I want, them, I want them to see my beauty. I want them to reverence me. I want them to, to appreciate my beauty. And, it's, of course, it's going to make him feel good. You know, it's just one of those things that uh, that pride does. It's it's it it's selfishness. He 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 wants to feel that feeling. He doesn't really care what the what the imbalance um, causes, what the <clears throat> result of this call uh, of of this is. But the fact is, the result of this causes an imbalance that uh, that necessitates God to make an alteration. Now, of course, this would go back to like the Silmarillion where um, Eru or Yuvatar tells Melkor, you know, nothing that you can't change the music in my despite. Anything that you do to try to alter the creation in, in spite of me, you will just find that you've, you've enhanced its glory. I mean, everything has ev everything that happens has its uttermost source in God. Therefore, you can't you can't alter it or destroy it. You can alter it, but not to its destruction. You you can only alter it. Period. So, my uh, my saying uh, in in book I wrote a little book of poetry. I, I I put forth this. I said, original immutability forces. Any direct counterforce to subordinately be the undoing of itself, the carrier and harbinger of its own destruction. If you come against original immutability, you you possibly can't alter it at all. But if you do alter it, you're simply going to be defining your own destruction, your your own negation. It has to be. Um, if you're gonna if you're gonna be in opposition to this, then you're just you're just setting forth the construct of your own ending. So in any case, the 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 reason why uh, the reason why all this is is of course as most people have already guessed. I mean, it's a human drama put forth. To prove something, it's going to prove that rejecting God, or at least rejecting the truth, or taking your own will as as 
as sovereign, that you are sovereign, that that you can say thus or thus, even if it's outside of God's will. Well, everything will eventually conform to God's will. Um, he's going to reconstitute everything back to a perfect state. And guess what? Those who withhold themselves and their will is in opposition to his will are going to have to be separated, removed. They're not going to be able to be part of that reconstituted, reconstructed geometry that God is, is going to return to. And so this whole thing of burning up, burning out, uh, if you take something like a star, a star is going to burn up. Uh, it's a process hydrogen to helium to heavier elements and you get to iron and then when enough iron builds up the star can no longer contain its uh it's 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 ratio of of heaviness to gravity and it, it explodes it implodes and then it explodes or it swells up you know, it starts to lose a grip gravitationally on its on the, the the matter, and then eventually that matter is just ejected, uh, and the core uh, explodes, and and certain portion of it, if it's heavy enough, it implodes into a region of extreme density, which I look at as far as a black hole, if they do exist, and I I believe they are interdimensional portals. And I don't believe that they're infinite in the sense of the singularity goes to an infinite point. I believe there's a there's a transition layer. There's a point at which it goes from one dimension to another, and so that it's not uh, it, it's not forever. Uh, that that singularity isn't down to the proverbial point. That there's a there's an area that it transitions. So this is just. Uh, my theory um, and I'll come back later and uh, I'll go on further there's more to say on this uh, I can delve deeper into the you know how the cells of our body are are uh, are a metaphor our bodies ourselves are a metaphor for the new body that the cells have interdependence and cooperation and that cancer cells while part of our body we need to get rid of because they can destroy the whole and that's the problem if lucifer is in rebellion he poses a threat to the whole if it's not dealt with well it's he deals with it that's just it he, he's not going to not deal with it uh and it's there to bring about the creation and we come about as a result and then he can go and into his creation and he can do the legal lawful thing of displaying his love for mankind by becoming sin by taking on in himself death by allowing death to have power over him but yet death can't have power over him death has no power over him other than in the flesh under these certain circumstances and then the conquering of death in that certain circumstance in that way gives rise to the ability to transform all of us if we follow his pattern and in doing so we have to we have to uh, give up our life we have to literally take on the personality of Christ we have to be completely open to laying down our will our own will and uh, and the the notion of saying, I, I will, I will do this, I will do that. I mean, you, you may not be alive 10 seconds from now. Every breath is a gift. You, uh, you say what you're going to eat for dinner later, but you don't know if you're going to be alive later for dinner. So just being alive from moment to moment is almost forces us to boast. Well, I'll see you later. Uh, you don't know that. But in any case, we, we, we live every second by faith. There's a reason that we're here. The reason is... For God's glory, He's gonna He's gonna do a work. He's gonna he, He's gonna He's gonna provoke all the angelic host, at least certainly the fallen ones, to jealousy over the fact that uh, we who are less than the angels in might and in glory are gonna be made higher than the angels. So 
uh, he, he does a, a great work. And, of course, I'll have more on say on this later. And, of course, uh, once again, I, I apologize for my voice. I'm trying to modulate uh, to not be monotone. So, so I, I want to get across these uh, what I feel are wonderful revelations of you know why we're here and how it all happened. So um, to those of you who are interested, great listen um think about it uh um certainly be here later to delve into it more deeply to give you references to to talk about uh, the symbolism in a greater degree to go into particulars that speak to uh you know why and how and even a higher you know in a, in a more explicit degree but uh, in the meantime uh Carry on, learn, um, gain wisdom, insight, understanding, and I'll talk to you next time.